you doing, everybody? Welcome to San Diego, California, as we bring you the penultimate matchup in the West Coast Conference regular season between number six Gonzaga and the San Diego Toreros in the Jenny Craig Pavilion. Kanoa Leahy along with P.J. Carlesimo, and the Bulldogs come in with much to play for, and they are, frankly, white hot. Winners of nine straight. They have also won 22 consecutive WCC road games dating back to January of 2016. They have not trailed in 144 minutes plus. That's over three games worth of time, and a win tonight clinches at least a share of the West Coast Conference Championship in the regular season for the sixth straight year. And P.J., one of the guys who will lead the way undoubtedly for Gonzaga, Jonathan Williams the third. Yeah, no question, Canola. The guy they called J3, he started out, he was all tournament in the PK80. He was twice player of the week in the WCC. He's on a string right now of six straight double-doubles. He leads the way for the Zags, who are winning as we're used to them doing in February. Gonzaga, by virtue of some big wins recently, including one in Moraga against number 22, St. Mary's. They sit at the top of the conference standings at 15 and one, 25 and four overall. San Diego entering the week in a tie for fifth place. Top six, it should be noted, received buys in the WCC postseason tournament. The Toreros may be the most improved team in the WCC and playing excellent defense under Lamont Smith. So the crowd on its feet, tip goes up in the air, and it will be the Bulldogs, last year's national runner-up, controlling here on the opening possession. Josh Perkins is the starting point guard second on the team in scoring, and he walks with it there. So an immediate turnover for Gonzaga, something Mark Few said his team needed to be careful with against this San Diego D. Well, they don't want to give this team confidence playing in their own building, and frankly, the Zags haven't trailed in better than three games, so USD with a chance to do something that hasn't been done in a long time against Gonzaga. Torero's throwing a bit of a new wrinkle in the starting five once again. Sitting their top scorer, Isaiah Pinheiro. He will come off the bench. The lone senior on the roster, though, Cameron Neubauer, gets the scoring started for USD. Nice move by Lamont Smith going to his senior. So the streak is over for Gonzaga. It lasts over three games. But immediately, it's tied up again as J3 rattles the cage. Well, that's the problem and the challenge for the Toreros, the front court of Gonzaga. They dominated in the game three weeks ago in Spokane. And this one is going to go the other way. And it's going to be a foul called against Yaunyan Masulski, the big man for Jonathan, San Diego. Jonathan Williams is so quick, first step. Very tough matchup for any big, but particularly for Yawan Masalski, the freshman from Belarus. Jonathan Williams, 6'9", fifth-year senior from Memphis, Tennessee, transferred after his first two seasons played at Missouri. Here's Silas Melson, another senior on the squad, mm -hmm. and he splashes it from the land of three. Only two seniors for the Zags also, and then <laughs> Melson one got it started right away for them. Here's Isaiah Wright, second on the team, just under 14 a game. Also the team leader with almost five and a half assists per outing. Five seconds on the shot clock. It is taken by Olin Carter the third. He's averaging almost 12 points per game off the mark. Here come the Zags. Zach Norvell Jr. No, the tip right in front of the rim by Killian Tilly at 6'10", did not go either. And Wright with some contact gets the shot up. He's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. PJ, you got an old-fashioned showdown here of one of the most prolific and efficient offenses in the country in Gonzaga and one of the stingiest defenses in all the land in San Diego. And yeah, there's no question Lamont Smith has built his team and this program. This is his third year. He's made steady progress every year. And what they are about is their half-court man-to-man defense. And this is about as healthy a challenge as you could ask for trying to shut down the Zags. Lamont Smith, the fifth head coach since the Toreros joined Division I back in 1979, previously an associate head coach at New Mexico under Craig Neal. 
but a former Torero player, and he has a couple of them, in fact, on the staff. He finished at 98, played here for Brad Holland, who's uh, in, in the audience tonight, another four, uh, talented coach and an excellent player himself. So a 5-4 early Bulldogs lead. Here's Williams. And he is able to go to work once again against Masalski. Masalski is the team leader in blocked shots. But Jay Will able to go right at him. And a near takeaway by the Bulldogs, but it's going to be a foul against Silas Melson. That's his first. Yeah, I think Mike Reed was going to let it go, but then when the ball came out of Yalian's hand, he had no choice but to call it. Mark Few in his 19th season, 29th overall at Gonzaga, the winningest active head coach by percentage, at least 20 wins in each of his seasons as Gonzaga head coach. And, well, they were within a possession or two of winning the whole shebang last year. Right down low, lost the handle. They get it in low to Tilly. The Frenchman, unable to get that one to go, and there is an offensive rebound by Williams. We have the man from Germany defend the man from France right there. <laughs> Neubauer taking care of Tilly. The European battle down low, and it goes out of bounds, stays here with Gonzaga. That was, as you saw a moment ago, something that Lamont Smith was concerned with, the offensive rebounding prowess of Gonzaga. Well, they're going to pound the ball inside, and they're going to try and pound him on the glass. They had a 14-11 advantage in the first game in Spokane three weeks ago. Last time they played back on February 1st, it was a 10-point win for the Zags as Norvell knocks down the tray. But the score was 69-59, so they did a good job slowing down the tempo and limiting the Zags relatively. And we'll have a whistle far away from the basket. It's going to go against J3, a little overzealous defensively. Little 10-2 Gonzaga run being enjoyed here in the last meeting. It was Gonzaga outscoring San Diego in the paint and kind of dominating down low. Olin Carter had an excellent game for the Toreros. He knocked down the threes. They dug a big hole at halftime and came out and finally got going. They're going to need threes to stay in this game tonight. Isaiah Pinheiro off the bench. Got it off the glass. And flexes the muscles as he gets back to the defensive end. Well, IP is their leading scorer and rebounder. Norvell, quick trigger, no. Rebound pulled down by Pinheiro. So immediately making an imprint here on this contest. And they're going to say it's out of bounds, the last touch by Pinheiro. So San Diego trying to hold strong here on its home floor against Gonzaga. Isaiah Pinheiro off the bench with the smooch. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And Gillette, the best a man can get. Gas Lamp Quarter in San Diego, not far away from Jenny Craig Pavilion, where we bring you number six Gonzaga and San Diego Bulldogs with the early four point advantage inside the arena. Kanoa Leahy alongside PJ Carlissimo. And PJ, what have you seen here so far through the first four plus? Well, Kanoa, you know, if you're going to beat the number six team in the country, you can't turn the ball over. USD has three turnovers already, and you can't give up offensive rebounds. Gonzaga has three offensive rebounds. So I'm sure that's what Lamont Smith is talking to his team about. But I'm really impressed with the job he's done this is a much improved san diego team they're really tough on the defensive end and i think if they can make some threes the problem when you play gonzaga is obvious they average 85 a game you need to score points if you're going to beat them you literally have to be very strong at both ends of the floor See some of the dominance in the paint and under the boards in that graphic. Well, I mean, it, it, there was no question about it in the first game. 38-20 points in the paint. They're off to a good start there. 24-7 second chance points. And can't give up as many offensive rebounds as they've been giving up. 
A 10-point advantage the first time around when these two teams met in Spokane. Gonzaga able to notch that victory back on February 1st. Here's San Diego now off of the miss. Open three from the corner is good. Isaiah Pinheiro making an instant impact off the bench. Came off the bench for the first time. Last time out for San Diego in what was a home win against BYU. He and Isaiah Wright, the two Isaiahs, as you see the turnover once again for Gonzaga. They were pulled off of the bench, even though they're the top two scorers. Lamont Smith saying he just kind of wanted to give them a wake-up call. And now Pinheiro, he kind of likes the dynamic of having this guy with some fire off the bench. Well, he's played well. They responded well. You know, the message was, was well taken. I mean, again, IP leads them in points and rebounds, and uh, he listened to Lamont Smith, and, and he's been very, very good uh, in responding to that message. But, I mean, he's a starter. He's going to, I would think he'll start the rest of the way for Lamont Smith. Yeah, he will definitely get starter minutes. There's no doubt about that. Left corner three off the iron too strong by Isaiah Wright. Both teams sloppy early, too many turnovers. Here's Rui Hachimura off the bench for Gonzaga. He's turned into a bit of a showcase for them by himself as you see him chase after the loose basketball and draws the foul. He was huge for Gonzaga in that win in Moraga back on February 10th. And for some reason, he loves to play against St. Mary's. He had 21 and four boards in Moraga, and he had 23 and four boards in the home game in Spokane, <laughs> the loss to St. Mary's. So uh, Rui likes to play against the Gales. Tilly and Tilly from straight on leaves that one short. And Terreros with an early opportunity to take the advantage again. Scored the first bucket that ended a streak going back over three games. In fact, seven halves. That Gonzaga had not trailed in a basketball game. Yeah, an amazing streak, really. Here's Jawan Gray, who just checked in a little while ago. Good defense by Corey Kispert, stayed on the ground. With two seconds on the shot clock, the hoist by Olin Carter. And we'll have a whistle underneath the bucket. It's going to go against Pinheiro. A lot of fouls early. Both teams a little sloppy. Gonzaga's having trouble finishing in the paint. They've had a lot of good looks in the paint. Uh, the, the court here at Jenny Craig Pavilion is all clear, so the paint is, is really not the dark color we're used to, but the Zags have had it right where they would like to get the ball, but they've been able to finish inside. Three team fouls for each side. And here's Hachimura has had a knack for stepping up big when the spotlight has been the largest for this Gonzaga team throughout the season in a nifty move there on the baseline. He's an excellent young player. He's going to be something else. I think another year, uh, he's going to be a very, very high pick. A 6'8 sophomore from Toyama, Japan. As you see, a foul called against Norvell. One of the keys that the Gonzaga coaches talked about was keeping his team off the free throw line, and they're committing too many fouls early. Nice spin move by Rui down there. Got the baseline move again. Very, very good quickness when you look at Jonathan Williams, Rui Hachimura, and Killian Tilly. Three of their bigs have very, very good quickness. Hachimura... Born of a mother of Japanese ancestry, his father from Benin in West Africa. Didn't start playing basketball until he was 13 years of age as Pinheiro hits the floater, and he is doing some damage right now against this Bulldog D. And here's another turnover. Pinheiro in transition. Tried to draw the contact, the shot off the mark. Chasing after his own loose basketball, it is cleared by Tilly. And here come the Zags in transition. Ahead it goes to Corey Kispert, the 6'6 freshman, able to lay it in. That's a tough call there. There was a little bit of contact. There wasn't, wasn't call, and they end up with two points the other way. Isaiah Pinheiro played well. He had 13-7 and seven in Spokane against the Zags. they got to solve that matchup. Ten to shoot. And that pass goes out of bounds. It belongs to the Bulldogs. Thoughts on the pace here? A little over 12 minutes to go in the first half. It's a little frantic for both teams. But neither team is really playing under control right now. And, uh, you know, they're, they're digging in here.
So a three-point advantage here for the Zags early. Hachimura to a series of moves. That one rims out on him, though. Trend continues. Nice penetration, good shot in the lane, but unable to finish. Defense there played by number 15, Alex Floresca, who immediately picks up the foul on what is deemed an illegal screen. So under 12, we got a timeout on the floor, and the foul's piling up. Yeah, we got a sloppy start. A lot of turnovers, a lot of fouls being called, some of them offensive that led to those turnovers. But neither coach can be happy with the way their team's playing right now. The good news is it's a close game. Back here at Jenny Craig Pavilion, a 14-11 lead for sixth-ranked Gonzaga over San Diego. This is the penultimate West Coast Conference regular season matchup for either team. Well, Isaiah Pinheiro, no question, he's giving him a huge lift coming in. He's got seven points, but you see the, the problem, the sloppiness. Six turnovers forced by Gonzaga has led to eight points for them. He, San Diego themselves has forced three. They haven't been able to cash them as much, but nine turnovers, a lot for two pretty good teams this early in the game. You know, a lot of fouls, a lot of turnovers. Need to settle down, play some basketball. Less whistles. That Gonzaga with a win, clinching at least a share of its sixth straight West Coast Conference regular season title. Perkins the pull up. That one rattles in and out. Offensive board, J3. With all kinds of traffic around him, couldn't get it up. And we'll have a whistle on the second putback Yeah, goal attempt. Corey Kisper with the second offensive rebound in that pos possession. And then when he got it up, uh, had goaltending, I think, on Misalski. That's the second rebound. He got it, but I think it was off the glass first. So the goaltend called against Masalski indeed. It's a 16-11 advantage for Gonzaga. Looked like Masalski maybe reached up through the rim or through the net to try to block that one. Here's Pinheiro. Even in Minsk, you're not allowed to do that. That's right. J3 in transition. A lot of contact there. And in fact, he will go to the free throw line. But Isaiah Pinheiro looking at the officiating crew saying, what about the contact at the oh, other end? At least that's his opinion. Exactly. Saturday at 4.15, this one could determine the Big 12 regular season champion as number eight Kansas takes on number six Texas Tech in a sonic blockbuster. Then, fifth ranked Duke hosts Syracuse at Cameron Indoor and still waiting to see when Marvin Bagley III is back for the Blue Devils. Both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app with the Jayhawks perhaps on the verge of doing once again is nothing short of remarkable, maybe their 14th regular season Big 12 crown. Well, we had Kansas right before Christmas, and they just continue to get better week by week. But in Big 12, you can't take anything for granted. And that trip to Lubbock is going to be very difficult, as that free throw was for Jonathan Williams. <laughs> Cameron Newbar picking up his second foul in that last sequence. So a six-point advantage here for Gonzaga. Here's Tyler Williams. Tried to lob it up. To Yaoyin Masolski of Belarus. And we'll have yet another foul called here. I think they got Silas Melson. He was trying to help slow the big down when he was going to the basket. Instead, he's going to earn a trip to the bench. I believe that's Silas' second foul. That is. And he helped out. They tried to throw the lob over the top to Masolski, and Silas tried to get in his way. So two for Melson. He has to sit. And we still have over 10 and a half minutes to play in this opening frame. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Williams working against Williams. And he got J3 up off his feet and draws the whistle. Yeah, one of the cardinal mistakes right there. Jonathan Williams had good position. He was between his man in the basket. He had no reason to, to you know, leave his feet. But his namesake, Tyler Williams, got him with the pump fake and got him up in the air. Killian Tilly will now be coming in. Give J3 a little bit of a rest, I think. Yeah, two fouls for J3. So you're starting to see it now impact in the individual totals here. And some of these guys are going to have to sit for extended minutes. Well, we had it right from the beginning. I mean, there's been, you know, fouls called starting early. And uh, USD is going to be shooting free throws the rest, the rest of the half. Next one will be the seventh. Uh, 
And Tyler Williams knocks it down. 6'5", junior from Plano, Texas. One of the team captains, not flashy. Does a lot of things well, though, for this Torero squad. Perkins too hard off the glass and the rebound off to Isaiah Wright. Surveying the floor, crosses up Perkins. Here's Pinheiro now in the paint. And they'll reset. Under 10 to shoot. Masalski trying to work up a shot against Tilly. And he goes lefty off the glass. Didn't look pretty, but very effective. Masalski averaging just four points and three and a half rebounds per contest. Hachimura to the other end. Can't get the reverse. Empty possession for Gonzaga and the Toreros within three with the ball here, nine and a half to go in the first. I'll tell you, the Gonzaga shot chart looks pretty. There's a ton of shots in close, but they don't have circles around them. They're not going down. Pinheiro, the pull-up. Too strong in the rebound off to Hachimura. How much of that is just Gonzaga not finishing? How much is this USD defense bothering you? I say 50-50. They're getting really good shots, but they must be being contested because they're just not finishing inside. Kispert can't hit. Long rebound, though, and another possession here for the Bulldogs. See all the assistant coaches on the USD bench They're talking to their defense right in front of them. The possession's not over till you get the defensive rebound. And that runner by Tilly, nicely done. Prior to that, Gonzaga was shooting 33% for the game. And Gonzaga, one of the best two-point shooting teams in the country. They need to get it into gear if they want to pull away here. Gonzaga by a handful, 8.47 left to play in the first half. Bulldogs ranked sixth. The win tonight over San Diego clinches them a share of the West Coast Conference regular season title for the sixth straight year, and it would be number 17 in the now 19-year coaching tenure of that guy, Mark Few. The numbers associated with Mark Few and the success he's had is mind-boggling. You know, my favorite one is he's got the highest winning percentage in college basketball coaching right now, the highest. He's the third fastest to 500 wins. You could go on and on and talk about the great job that Fuey has done at Gonzaga. Dish down low to Gray from right, up in, and one. Really nice penetration, drew the help, and then the strong finish inside. Really good job, that's a really nice pass. And the sophomore from Dover, Delaware, with a good finish. Foul goes against Kispert. And Gray able to complete the three-point play. He was ejected from that last win for San Diego in the first half against BYU for a flagrant two foul. It was after a rebound. Elbows were out. They ruled that he was a little over-exuberant in that process, as you see Hachimura giving a little due process in the post. Yeah, Alex Floresca, that's a tough cover for him. I Rui Hachimura is a tough cover for just about anybody in college basketball right now. Here's Floresca, goes to the hook shot. Gets the follow, unable to put it in. Tyler Williams under the rim and it's stripped out of bounds. USD giving the Zags a little bit of their own medicine, beating them up on the offensive boards. Rui Hachimura is, he's big, He's quick, and he's got very, very good skills. That's why he's such a good cover. Little step through and a finish off the glass. Two top 10 teams. One Big 12 blockbuster. Yeah! Kansas, Texas Tech, Saturday at 415 on ESPN. Looking forward to that big showdown, Kansas and Texas Tech. Tech suffering a bit of a setback with a loss to Oklahoma State last night, so that one 
Now Bears even more important for them. News and notes from around the college basketball world. Good news and bad news. If you're Missouri and Conzo Martin, Michael Porter Jr. clear for full contact. Has only played two minutes this season before suffering a back injury and having to undergo surgery. And how about Alonzo Trier for Arizona? Ruled ineligible by the NCAA for testing positive for a PED. Apparently the same substance. Well, uh, they, they said traces. I know Arizona is appealing that and anxious to see whether they're going to discover that that was already in there. And nice finish inside. The big man, Yalyan Misalski, overpowers the Zags inside. Good execution on the out of bounds pass and a really clever entry pass by Isaiah Wright. Isaiah Wright. The guy, the big guy, they call him Squirrel. Big Squirrel. Squirrel with a good finish. Lamont Smith saying when he was looking through video of Masalski. So he looks kind of squirrely. He was all over the place. And sure enough, when he arrived here and his assistant coaches saw him in action, they agreed. And so Big Squirrel all of a sudden became the de facto nickname. Defense! Defense! Three ball by Norvell. That one rings out. Gonzaga now two of seven from beyond the arc. Step back by Wright. Doesn't get the bounce there. Rebound collected by Hachimura. Kispert. Got it for three. Got a beautiful stroke. That's too much room to give him. Freshman from... Edmonds, Washington. He was off to a good start and then had a bad ankle sprain right around the time of the PK-80, and it's taken him a long time to get back into playing as well as he was playing early. Gonzaga so balanced. Five players averaging double figures and a sixth, Silas Melson, who's sitting the bench with two fouls, averaging 9.9 .9 points per game. And there's a foul on Hachimura. Getting into the back of Masolski. So Masolski, once again, with a trip to the free throw line upcoming. Well, it's the penetration that's causing problems. USD is breaking down the Gonzaga defense with dribble penetration or with good entry passes. And, uh, you know, what? you get it down in that close, you force help, and then you end up with a smaller guy uh, trying to play the, try, play the big man. Tip off your weekend tomorrow with our star-studded NBA Friday doubleheader at 8 Eastern. Carl Anthony Towns and Jimmy Butler. As the rest of the Timberwolves are in Houston to take on Chris Paul, James Harden, and the Rockets. Then Dennis Smith Jr. leads the Mavs against the Lakers. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown tomorrow at 7 on ESPN and the ESPN app. Now he converts a couple of free throws. He's a 45% free thrower coming in. Shoots the ball very, very high. Arcs it up near the, even with the uh, shot clock, but he got both of those to drop. And that one rolls out of bounds. Last touched by Perkins. So another turnover for the Zags. That's number four. Well, the difference is Gonzaga has been able to convert. Seven USD turnovers has led to 10 points or 11 points for the Zags. USD has been unable to convert. And, ooh, they had it that time. That's what happens. They get the turnover, and they turn it right back to them. Missed opportunity there. Just threw it too hard. He was wide open, and, and Pinheiro saw him. He just had too much on the pass for Olin to catch it. So eighth turnover for the Toreros. Seconds to shoot. That pesky defense once again forcing the three. This time, though, Tilly able to knock it down. That is an area where San Diego defensively is extremely stout. Second in the nation coming into the week in three-point percentage defense. Well, Kelly and Tilly, one of the best. He's actually tied for fifth in the WCC in three-point percentage. Excellent shooting big. Pinheiro got it to go plus one. Once again, a really good entry pass. Good cut by Pinheiro. Good entry pass inside, and the fouls keep building up. Isaiah Wright, beautiful lead pass. 
Inyero's awful big. Josh Perkins is a good defender, but Inyero too big and too strong. Number 22, Jeremy Jones, the 6'7 redshirt junior from San Antonio, picking up the foul there. And Pinheiro unable to complete the three-point play. Gonzaga over the 10 foul limit, so double bonus here going forward the last five minutes plus for San Diego. Here's Norvell. May have gotten tripped up, no whistle. And the Torero's off and running. The quick three by Olin Carter. Norvell back the other way, misses on the lay-in. Torero's control. Zags trying to get into their zone. They were unable to get it set last time, and the quick three resulted. There's their 2-3 zone. This time they do a better job getting it set up. Game is tied for the first time at 27. Right, bounce pass underneath. Floresca had to save it from going out of bounds. And Olin Carter the third obliges him on the save. Timeout Bulldogs. San Diego with its first lead since they were up 2-0 to get it started. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mobile One and your protection. Proven protection for 20,000 miles. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Three-point advantage for San Diego. A 13-4 run put together over the last 3.25. And Olin Carter III, the latest to join the fraternity of 1,000 career point scorers in Torero's history, surpassed it in his last game against BYU. He knocked down the last two threes. They did. The first time, they didn't do a good job getting back. Second time, they attacked it well. We heard Tom Crean talking about free throws. 10-5 personal fouls. The Zags have committed 10. That leads to a 9-2 free throw attempts discrepancy in favor of USD. Perkins right out of the timeout. Silences the crowd momentarily with the triple. Back to the zone. Perkins a 41% three-point shooter coming in. Right though from the elbow. And one rims out. Quality look, though, PJ. Yeah, he did. I think Jakob Larson, the bigs, got to go up there. There was nobody low. They got the ball into the foul line area. Zach Norvell with the heat check. The follow not there by Kispert. Torero's looking to run. Open look for Carter. Got it! They call him O. He just got his 1,000 points Saturday night here against BYU. And he's picking up right where he left off. Yeah, O is in. Oh, boy, he's hit his last three triples. And now we'll have a whistle against San Diego and a hobbling Jonathan Williams for the Bulldogs. That's never a good sight to see. No, Josh Therry and the trainer standing there out of bounds trying to decide whether he needs to come on the court or not. Heads back to the bench. So J3 will try to relace the shoes and tough it out. Oh, yeah, you can see the yeah, ankle tripped. rolling. So Gonzaga inbounding from the baseline. Almost didn't get it in. And trying to test that ankle immediately as Williams had to save it from going out of bounds, but he wasn't able to do so. 
What Lamont Smith has done with San Diego is he has, in now his third year, established an identity for this program, and that identity revolves around the defensive end. Without question, Cano, and again, you could see watching him practice yesterday, watching the shoot around today, uh, obviously you know what kind of job Mark Few does at Gonzaga, but I was really impressed with Lamont. Uh, good, same play, they found the seam right in the middle of the zone right there. Tyler Williams wide open, and he cashes it from the free throw line. He's averaging nine a game. It is a five-point Torero's advantage. Norvell challenging the big Masolski. Last touched out of bounds, though, by USD. So it'll stay here with Gonzaga. Masolski fourth in the West Coast Conference in blocks per game coming in. Again, penetration. They're inside in the paint, but unable to finish. The guy did a really good job staying vertical. A sloppy turnover again. Turnover number six for the Zags. So jakob has got to come up. He did a good job that time. Carter tried to draw the contact. Almost got it to go anyway. Yeah, it's very difficult when you're shooting, trying to get foul, as opposed to shooting to make the shot. Perkins. Able to get deep penetration off the dribble. And a whistle against the Toreros. Perkins will shoot too. Mark Few, you see him talking to his players right now, telling them to settle down. I really think he's got to like where they're getting the shots from, but he may not like the shot. They've got to be a little bit more under control, perhaps pause a little bit before they, they take the shot. Jakob Larson, I, you know, I think with two mistakes right there, it's hard for the big, but they got that look right in front of them on the zone and then a turnover on the other end. Perkins knocking down the free throw. Foul was called against Tyler Williams. Preseason all West Coast Conference selection. He gets both of them to go. Over a thousand career points and over 400 career assists for Josh Perkins, the redshirt junior. And he's going to be top 10 in a lot of categories before he finishes in Spokane. A minute and a half to go. 10 seconds to shoot. Right, trying to make something happen. Got it to Masolski. Got his shot blocked. The follow-up, though, was not blocked. Back to a five-point advantage. The Zags fortunate to maintain possession here. Silas Nelson back on the floor, by the way, playing with the two fouls, PJ. Yeah, he and uh, J3. Got to dodge a bullet here for a minute. Get into the locker room. This team can regroup. Pinheiro for three. And secured by Williams. So San Diego gets another stab at it. Pinheiro, nobody picked him up, but he misses the chippy. Good look, really good look. Here's Nelson. That one doesn't go. Another offensive board for Gonzaga. A lot of clanging noises coming at both ends right now. Yeah, Corey Kispert did a good job tracking down that offensive rebound. Zags can pretty much bleed out the last 22 seconds here. And here comes the crowd. No foul to give for the Toreros there. They've committed seven. If they do foul, it'll be a one-on-one. -on -one. Two seconds to shoot. J3 has got to get it up. He does. Just in the nick of time. That's how the first frame comes to a close. San Diego with the 37-34 advantage. Nine points apiece for Pinheiro and Masolski. Holding Gonzaga to 37% from the floor. Once again, a three-point lead for the Toreros. We'll join Kevin Connors, Dallin Cuff, and Tom Crean for the Land Rover Halftime Report. California, where we got ourselves a ball game. Sixth-ranked Gonzaga trailing at the half. 
to San Diego in this West Coast Conference affair, 37-34. Inside, Jenny Craig Pavilion alongside P.J. Carlesimo. I'm Kanoa Leahy. P.J., this is a far cry from the last time these two teams played in this building when Gonzaga won by 58. They're trailing by three here in the break. My team last year did that to a lot of people. But I tell you, they played Gonzaga very tough. It was a two-point game with like three and a half to go in Spokane, and they're doing it today, and they're making threes. You have to do it with offense if you're going to hang in with Gonzaga, and they're doing it. Early on, it was Isaiah Pinheiro taking it to the basket with a good finish, and also from downtown, he did a good job. That right corner's been deadly for USD. The guy that really got it going was Olin Carter III. He just got his 1,000 point last game against BYU. He came in smoking, knocked down three threes. He had 21 points, don't forget, and made five threes in the first game against Gonzaga, so he's not surprising him. Maybe Yayan Masulski, this could have been a little bit of a surprise. He doesn't always look graceful. There's with the left hand. This one, he just like kind of hammers into the body and gets the finish inside. So all three of those guys, nine points apiece. They've got USD sitting very, very nice as we begin the second half. The numbers for both teams. Gonzaga, the first time not leading at the intermission since December 21st. Well, they're not doing the thing that they normally do very well, which is make two-point field goals. As good a three-point shooting team as they are, they're exceptional inside the arc, but not tonight. Kind of a contested shot right there, but Masalski with the offensive rebound. Carter gets it up top. Here's Tyler Williams, rounds the corner and got it blocked out of bounds. Hey, look, if Drexel can come back from down 34 on Delaware, then I imagine if you're Lamont Smith for San Diego, you're thinking, yeah, the Zags, uh, they can do it to they us in this in second position. half. They were in position. They could have won the first game in Spokane. There's no question they're good enough to, to beat Gonzaga. Just to finish that thought, Gonzaga was 8 for 23 inside the arc. They shot 35%. That's why they're in trouble. They've only got 34 points against the Torero defense. Five seconds on the shot. What about that by Isaiah Wright? He did it to him lefty and won. He switched hands. Josh Perkins had decent position, but he got a little bit too much body in it, but a clever move. So he turns it, yeah, he stopped. Josh Perkins couldn't stop. He bumped him right there. Good finish. We've had a lot of old-fashioned three-point plays or some opportunities for old-fashioned plays. Largest lead of the game for USD, 40 to 34. So who do the Zags go to? They go to J3, and he delivers on a two. Williams with seven first half points. That gets him to nine. Right the lob. Masalski comes down with it and lays it up and in. Freshman having one of, if not his best game all year. And don't forget that first possession, Kanoa, that was keyed by an offensive rebound. 11 points for Yalian Masolski. And then gets the block on J3. Remember, on the line for Gonzaga as they try to close in on yet another regular season conference championship. A 22 game road win streak that dates back to January of 2016 in conference. That's an amazing stat. 22 straight road conference wins. Wright had to get it up and he does it again this time off the glass. And the officials are gonna check it out as that one came oh so close to the final second. Wow, that's one of those buckets that if you're Mark Few, and I, I'm sure Fewey doesn't think as negatively as I do, but if you're a coach there and one of those goes in, you start shaking your head going, man, it's one of those nights. you got to fight your way out of this. Remember he hit the off-balance left-hander plus one just moments ago, well and that time goes off the glass. Well defended by Kelly and Tilly. We could not see the clock at all in that one. It's awfully close. Yep. They scored it. They kept it as a bucket. Mike Reed, Randy McCall, and D.G. Nielsen. 
And it's an eight-point advantage for San Diego. Well, a ton of time left, and Gonzaga is a veteran team. They know how to get themselves out of this mix, but they've got to pick it up on both ends. Nelson the drive, kicks it, even though it looked like he had an open lane, but that's all right because Perkins drills the three. Well, they've had two good offensive possessions in three opportunities, but they got to clean it up down here on the defensive end. They're giving up offensive rebounds and they're giving up penetration. Eight points now for Perkins. Fighting for position down low is Isaiah Pinheiro, and it'll be a foul defensively against Melson on the overplay. That's number three. That's three, and that's a tough matchup for Silas Melson. Pinheiro is a big, active wing transfer from Portland State, who has played very, very well. The two Isaiahs, both transfers, first-year players for USD, and they've both done a really good job for Lamont Smith. Huge difference makers. And when you look at the difference from the composition and personality of this program last year, the two Isaiahs proving to be very meaningful to the overall success this year. And I say success, they're guaranteed their first winning season under Lamont Smith. Two seconds on the shot clock, and Olin Carter with a little late clock heroics. Well, that's two baskets in the last two seconds that were well defended. Tilly, little show and go, gets it up off the window. The bruise in the bucket. Well, the Zags right now staying in with their offense, Canola, which is fine. They've got to stay in touch with USD, who's off to a great start. They had a great start second half in Spokane also. They trailed by nine, and they came out, and Olin Carter got him going with some threes to begin the second half. That got USD back in it. This time, they've started out the second half on fire. They've opened the game up, and... Gonzaga doing a good job offensively staying close, but they got to clean it up on the defensive end. So Killian Tilly to the free throw line. And he very coolly knocks that one down. Little full court, 1-2-2. Two, two. Kind of a nuisance press by the Zags. They're not necessarily looking for a turnover. Try and disrupt the USD offense. I'll tell you what, they've had two possessions in a row where they bled down to the last two seconds and made circus shots. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's quite the lifeline that will sustain USD. The miss there and then a foul against Gonzaga, and it looks like this may be on Melson. It is. That is his fourth personal foul. With 16-17 to go, PJ. Uh, Silas Melson is a senior. Mark Few obviously trusts him, felt he could play without fouls, but shot comes from there, and he's in trying to box out. That's a tough call, very tough call, particularly for your fourth foul. Yeah, that changes the complexion of things for Gonzaga for a while. Here's Juwan Gray working against Williams. Now Pinheiro. Isoed with Tilly. Gets it back from Williams. How patient were they on that possession? I'll tell you what, they are really using the clock extremely well. And Tyler Williams was very composed, forced the switch. When Rui went by him, he made the simple pass inside to Pinheiro. Williams. Prior to the shot attempt, it's going to be a foul on Pinheiro. Well, Torero's have it rolling right now, PJ. Well, they certainly do. And again, it, the way they're scoring late in the clock, not much you can do. Like that, that's a tough shot, and it was well contested. I call that good defense, better offense. That's a mistake. Rui jumped out. They took advantage. Pinheiro cashed it. There's a buzz brewing in Jenny Craig Pavilion as San Diego leads 48-42. Hey, look, there's a ton of basketball to be played, but if a team is to knock off a top 10 opponent, sometimes you got to make some improbable buckets, PJ. Well, they certainly did that again. That's a tough shot. That's left hand and an and one. This is, again, with the shot clock about to run out. That's a horse shot right there. 
That's off one foot. This is good offense right here. It's good defense, and that's a really good step back by Olin Carter. Can't ask for a better start, right? That's a mistake by Rui. Tyler Williams recognized he finds Pinero and Pinero inside. USD five for eight to start the second half. Three offensive rebounds. That's a pretty good formula, and no turnovers so far, Kanoa. The turnovers got him in trouble in the first half. Carter and Pinero, 11 apiece. Masulski's been a surprise with nine. Isaiah Wright also with nine. Balanced scoring for USD. Exceptional offensive start. Randy McCall, the officials over there with Josh Perkins. I got to think there's some blood because they see the trainer, Josh Therian. Yeah. Randy McCall just uh, motioned to us. There's a little bit of blood on his, looks to be his left forearm. So they'll do their best to cover that up. Saturday yeah, at 415, this one could determine the Big 12 regular season champion as number eight Kansas takes on number six Texas Tech in a sonic blockbuster. Then fifth ranked Duke hosts Syracuse at Cameron Indoor. And we are waiting to see if Marvin Bagley III is back for this one. Both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app. So Perkins back out there, back to work. Got stripped down low by Alex Floresca. There we go again. Two-point field goal attempts in close, but contested under a lot of duress. Zags unable to finish. Pinheiro squaring up against J3. Tough fadeaway blocked by Williams, and he is able to gather it for possession. Excellent defensive possession, and here's a transition basket to follow. So a quick one for Gonzaga. And they're back within four. Well, this is no question. This is the end they've got to clean up. They need to get some stops and defensive rebounds. Right for three. Got it. 39% three-point shooter. And Isaiah Wright knocks that one down. Five for nine from downtown for the Toreros. Hachimura squares up. That one off the heel. Rebound to Tyler Williams. Right open from the corner. Offensive board, Floresca. Might have gotten away with a push, but it's an offensive rebound nonetheless. Right. Put it on a little back and forth dribble against Williams, but they'll reset. Right with some room. That one rattled in and out. The patience of the Toreros offensively. Well, there's no question that's part of Lamont Smith's game plan tonight. They want to make Gonzaga play defense. They want to shorten the game. Longer possessions, fewer possessions. That's in favor of USD. Another shot in the paint, unable to finish. Also something that has to happen, perhaps in an upset of this magnitude, if this were to go down, not only making improbable shots yourself, but the top 10 team missing the easy bunnies. Well, they're missing some easy shots, but I, again, I credit USD defense for most of that. And again, under 10 to shoot. The three ball left short by Williams, trying to chase down the loose ball. Look out as Williams hits the deck hard. And remember, he had already rolled that left ankle in the first half, walking gingerly, but appears to be OK. Yeah, he looks fine. <laughs> So that's number two on Tyler Williams. Mark Few, such an incredible coaching job that he's done in his career, but perhaps even more this year. I mean, this is a team that lost 65% of his offense from the national runner-up squad a year ago. Oh, there's no question. I mean, you talk about getting wiped out. I mean, it, Shemek Karnowski, Jordan Matthews, Nigel Williams-Goss. That's three starters, major contributors. And then the super sub, Zach Collins, number 10 pick in the draft off the bench. They were wiped out, but they have not missed a beat. 
Tilly in close, gets the friendly roll. Yeah, and so this game taking on more importance, obviously, down the home stretch of the regular season, not just because they're trying to snag the regular season title or at least a share as they would with a victory tonight, but they were elevated up to the four seed line by our own Joe Lenardi today. Yeah, Joe had him on the four line. There's no question playing in the Midwest, but uh, playing where doesn't really matter. Four seed is incredible, and they, they certainly need to win if they want to maintain that. Three seconds to shoot and a whistle on the drive by Carter. San Diego playing with fire, taking the shot clock down under 10 repeatedly, and it has worked out positively for them for the most part. Well, they're doing it intentionally. I didn't see the foul right there, but again, you look at the, the resume. Uh, I mean, there's no question. They, they played the tough non-conference schedule. They always do. Uh, excellent win against Ohio State. They beat St. Mary's in Moraga. Tough loss right here in San Diego. The city hasn't been good to them. They <laughs> lost at San Diego State, and they're trailing right now to the Toreros. So I don't think they like their two trips so far to beautiful San Diego. Again, down to five on the clock. Here's Gray. Someone's got to shoot it. He will and draws nothing. So that Gonzaga defense holds for the entirety of that possession. We got a timeout on the floor. But the buzz is brewing. San Diego up a handful on the six ranked Zags. Well, so far, a good one in San Diego, and these high-profile quarterbacks are enjoying things. In the hat, that's USC QB Sam Darnold. On the left, Josh Allen of Wyoming. You think they're talking about who deserves to go number one overall in the upcoming NFL draft? I would think they're talking about how they're going to invest <laughs> the few dollars they're going to come into very shortly. They're and training with Jordan Palmer, Carson Palmer's brother, in Southern California prior to the draft. And I should say well-deserved also. Oh, yeah. Very well thought of and coming off excellent performance. Well, wow. no surprise that Gonzaga is struggling inside. You look at those numbers. Number two, three-point field goal percentage. But top 20, that's out of 351 teams. Field goal percentage D and scoring defense. So uh, USD executing their game plan extremely well. Sloppy pass by Killian Tilly. Good hands, though, once again exhibited by Rui Hachimura. Deep position doesn't pay off, though. That's been the story tonight. But again, those are contested shots. They're doing a good job. Gonzaga's getting the ball what would seem to be in good position, but unable to finish. Gonzaga shooting at 40% for the game. Entering this game, they were averaging 50% for the year. That's a bad miss by Isaiah Pinheiro. Open look for Kispert. Yes. Corey Kispert gave him good minutes in the first half, and he picks up right there. He had seven points off the bench in the first half. Knocks down his first look. He's got a very, very good stroke. Yeah, that's a textbook release there for Corey Kispert from Edmonds, Washington, out of Kings High School. And here's a takeaway. First turnover of the second half for the Toreros. Perkins the kick. Tilly for three. Splash! And guess who just vaulted in front? Good timeout by Lamont Smith. San Diego scoreless the last 428. Not so for Gonzaga. Again, created by the defense. They get the turnover and they know what to do with it. Good look. Soon, top 10 teams. One Big 12 blockbuster. Kansas, Texas Tech, Saturday at 4.15 on ESPN. Fun one look to look forward to there as Kansas is hoping to secure its 14th straight Big 12 regular season championship. Gonzaga's been pretty consistent in the West Coast Conference to the same degree, and their offense starting to gain some traction here as they take their first lead since it was 27-24 in the first half. Well, they're shooting the ball really well. We said early on second half they were staying in with their offense. Now they're getting some stops also. But I mean, that's just a good look right there. Corey Kispert wide open. He's too good a shooter. Here's what I think was huge because USD had not turned the ball over one time in the second half. J3 comes up with the steal. Really good look. Josh Perkins, and there is the dagger 
again, turned it around. Critical right now for USD. More important for USD uh, until the next time out. They've got to settle down. They don't have to necessarily take the lead or pull away. They just need to stay in touch. They can't afford for the Zags to go on a run or lengthen their run right now. 8-0 run here for the Bulldogs. San Diego trying to end a four and a half plus minute drought. And six seconds to shoot. It's right. He's been good late in the shot clock that time, though it bounces off the iron rebound, Hachimura. Good contest by Kelly and Tilly. Perkins for three. May have bit off a little more than he could chew yeah. on that particular offer. I don't think Fury can be too thrilled with that shot. Right. Unable to hit. So the shots that were falling earlier in this game and even earlier in this half, not so much here as of late for the Toreros. Well, it's going to come down to execution right now. Perkins dribbles all the way to the baseline. That's a good shot, though. Josh Perkins just missed that shot. That's a good shot. In transition, it's right. Six minutes of scoreless basketball here for San Diego. Can Carter end it? Yes, he can. Olin Carter likes to play against the Zags. He now has 13. Ooh, good call. And they're going to call the offensive against Williams with the opposite arm hook. DJ Nelson right on top of the call. That's an automatic call. CJ3 watch his hand that can't do that just reach right around with the left hand easy call correct call in this day and age in college basketball they're going to call that each and every time every single and in the NBA they're going to call that on every level well you're going to find out you're doing three different versions of the game of basketball here this week including tonight Neubauer kind of buried on the baseline. Five seconds to shoot. Williams, tough shot. Just gets a piece of the iron, then gets his own rebound. Okay, USD's done a good job since that Lamont Smith timeout. Good timeout when the Zags jumped ahead, settled his team down, and they've responded very well into this next immediate timeout that will come on the next whistle. Pinheiro draws the contact, draws the whistle, and lets out a roar as the clock ticks to 7.59 to go. Well, he took it strong, so he got the call against Corey Kispert. Foul number three on Kispert. Free throws on the other side. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Yeah, the Pac-12 looking a lot different with the latest news regarding Alonzo Trier. Well, if anybody can pick up the slack, it's DeAndre Ayton. He is the real deal. I hope they get sorted out, uh, Alonzo Trier. If that, in fact, was carryover uh, from earlier, I, I hope he gets his eligibility back because that's a major impact uh, for Sean Miller's Wildcats. Saw the Wildcats on the four line, according to Joe Lenardi in his latest bracketology. Gonzaga sharing that four line here as of today and finding themselves in a battle with San Diego with Isaiah Pinheiro at the free throw line. He's able to tie things up. In fact, is able to give San Diego the two point advantage. The runner by Norvell. Offensive foul is called. It's been a rough go of it. 
you're, you're, being, you're being kind. Zach Norvell's one for eight from the field, one for four from the three-point line, and that's his fourth turnover right there. That's not a bad night. That's a disaster. Gonzaga coaching staff, though, they refer to him as the microwave, stealing a little bit from the old Vinnie Johnson well, he moniker. He two threes late in the game up in Spokane when they were on the ropes, and USD was right where they wanted to be. He hit two. Oh, no, yes. Knocked out yeah. a pair of threes. Oh, right. Hesitated on the three. Now drives the teardrop off the heel. And Good a foul's going to go against USD. Yeah, he's going to call it. Trying to move him out right there, Alex Floreska. Really good contest. I think it was Killian Tilly. I was screened by the official in front of me, but again, this teardrop had to go a lot higher. No, it was Rui Hachimura right there. That's great extension by Rui and Floreski. You see him just pushing him out of the way. That's only four fouls for USD. Excuse me, that's seven for USD if the scoreboard's right. We got seven on the Gonzaga side and oh, okay. four Gonzaga on the San song. Diego side. Read, but but I'm with you. I'm, yeah. I'm scoreboard illiterate here in this put the, particular the, arena. The SD is obviously on both sides. Oh, good block. Great play by Pinheiro. Good contest on Kelly and Tilly. Gonzaga has dominated this series. They've won seven straight. Pinheiro hoping to change that. He's got 14. And it's a four-point advantage for the Toreros. We're closing in on six and a half to play. Hachimura got the whistle. And will go to the free throw line. Tough finish inside by Rui Hachimura. Couldn't get this. Couldn't get it to go. Pinheiro's a tough cover because he can shoot the three. And he's very athletic. Got the ability to put the ball on the floor and go by on the dribble as he did there. No weak side help coming for the Zags. Hachimura hoping to end a drought that has lasted three minutes and 55 seconds for the Bulldogs. And he does. 82% free thrower. One of the many things Rui Hachimura does very well. Just the fifth Japanese-born male to receive a Division I NCAA basketball scholarship, Rui Hachimura. People compare him in terms of his physique and build in some instances to Kawhi Leonard, yeah, players of that ilk. Yeah, he's, he's, bigger, than, he's bigger than Kawhi. I, I just like he's the whole package. I think he's really going to be a special player. He's still got a ways to go, but I, I love where he's at right now. Silas Melson in the game for Killian Tilly, give Killian Tilly a quick rest. Killian Tilly's kept them in the game. Uh, he's done a really good job for Mark Few. How about Few rolling the dice with Nelson playing with the four fouls? Well, he realized the game's down the line right now, and they, they have enough players. Uh, Silas has to come out and give him some good minutes. How important was Killian Tilly for this team, scoring seven straight points in one stretch? Open look for Williams. Can't hit. Offensive rebound, Pinheiro. And it'll be last touched out of bounds by Gonzaga. Pinheiro came up with the rebound, and then the Zags had him pinned on the baseline. I guess the one man in the double must have been Silas Mel or Zach Norvell right there must have had his foot out of bounds. So the inbound goes out in front to Isaiah Wright. Six minutes to play. Toreros leading the sixth-ranked Bulldogs by a bucket. Pinheiro, turn around. Good luck, couldn't finish. Almost came away with the steal. Our table got rattled. We had Isaiah Pinheiro sitting right on our lap. Here's Norville. That went off the heel, rebound, great box out by Tyler Williams. Zach Norvell just unable to finish inside or outside for that matter. Right dribbles baseline. 
Here's Carter in the deep corner. Six seconds on the shot clock. Pull up three. Nice defense by Josh Perkins. He closed quickly, did not let Olin Carter get off the three and then forced him to take a contested jumper. Great cut and great dish as Norvell able to finish and one and maybe the microwave showing signs of heating up. Well, I'll tell you, he picked a pretty good time, but he, you know, the key, youngsters watching out there, Zach Norvell not able to make a bucket. He's one for nine, but he moves without the ball. That's a really good cut to the basket. J3, Jonathan Williams with the good look. It's not going for you, move without the ball, take the ball to the basket, earn a trip to the free throw line. He did both in that possession, Zach Norvell. Norvell, 6'5", redshirt freshman from Chicago, Illinois, out of Simeon Career Academy in Chicago, a former teammate of Jabari Parker. And he completes the three-point play, another old-fashioned three-point play. Well, at 84 percent, you're right. There's been a lot of buckets, a lot of fouls going to the basket. Both of these teams making a concerted effort to attack the rim. Now we're trading blows here as we get inside of five minutes. And the reach-in foul called against Perkins. Yeah, Mark Few's telling him he wants the aggressive defense, but they got to recognize they're in the bonus. That's the eighth foul for the Zags. You have to adjust. You're in the bonus. You can't defend quite that aggressively. Third foul on Perkins. So Olin Carter, the third, goes to the free throw line. 77% free throw shooter. But I tell you what, both teams really struggling to score right now in the half court. And the last thing you want to do is put somebody on the free throw line, particularly somebody who's a pretty good free thrower. Served as the primary point guard for this team last year. Oh, and Carter's trying to dry his hands. He, he walked over to the bench, wanted to get a towel, and the, the referee said, come on, you got to shoot it. He makes it anyhow. He saw him. He's, now he's going over. His hands are wet. Yeah, went for an interesting method to dry his hands prior to that first one. Well, he throw. had to just reach down. They, they wouldn't let him go. They said, you know, you're taking too much time. You got to shoot the free throw. Second one is good. Just like that, the Toreros back in front. And the bull pit behind us, student section. Hachimura, a couple of pump fakes, trickles off the rim, but he'll shoot more free throws. Well, the bullpen doesn't like the call, but again, Rui just basically makes him make the call. I just sh shake my head. It's it's such an interesting matchup. Uh, see, Cameron left his feet a little. That's a good call. Get chopped down with his hands and left his feet a little bit. I mean, it's unbelievable. We got late in the game right now. You got a senior playing his last game, who just was awarded, by the way, first team. All academic West Coast Conference, Cameron Newby. We got a player from Berlin, Germany, guarding somebody from Toyama, Japan. Yeah. In San Diego. Absolutely. Neubauer to the bench with the four fouls. He was honored prior to the game as the lone senior. The lone holdover from the Bill Greer era of Torero basketball. And Hachimura good again from the foul line. Nine for ten, Gonzaga from the free throw line, and they've needed every one of them. Eight points for Hachimura. And here's a takeaway right. and a reach-in foul by Isaiah Wright. Bad foul. Might say he was going to get a breakaway, but I don't know. That's going to put them in the bonus when we come back from the break. One-point advantage, Gonzaga. Texas Tech in a sonic blockbuster, then fifth-ranked Duke hosts Syracuse at Cameron Indoor. And we'll have to see if Marvin Bagley III is back for that one. Both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app.
Well, on the line for the Bulldogs, we mentioned earlier, 22 straight road conference victories, nine straight wins overall. And again, tonight with a victory, they would clinch at least a share of the West Coast Conference title for the sixth straight season. Now, St. Mary's is watching this closely because there's one game remaining in the regular season for Gonzaga. It's at BYU Saturday. That so if they going to be tough also. Exactly. If they lose one of these games but win the other, then even though they claim a share with St. Mary's, if the Gales were to win out, St. Mary's, by virtue of the tiebreaker, would get the number one seed in the West Coast Conference Tournament. Well, that tournament at the Orleans has really been an excellent. I think it's the 10th anniversary of the WCC moving that tournament to Las Vegas in the Orleans. It's been a great, great event. And more years than not, those two hook up. All that really matters, it'll be a slightly better path to the finals. But all we're really talking about is which one's wearing the white uniforms <laughs> and which one's wearing the blue. Should those two advance. Hachimura coming up clutch out of the timeout. Three-point advantage now for Gonzaga. Of course, the Bulldogs could render all of that discussion moot if they just win out here. If they take care of business. Here's Masolski. Six seconds on the shot clock. Pinheiro, jab step three. And a good box out there by Hachimura. I love Hachimura late in games. Defensively, on the glass, he happened to make a couple free throws, too. Without even the offense, he just does so many good things down the stretch for this team. Ten points, seven rebounds. Now for the product from Japan. Here's J3. He's got nine points, nine boards. Goes to the running hook shot and drills it. Senior doing what a senior should do late in the game, stepping up and getting it done. J3 played his first two years at Missouri. A two-time West Coast Conference Player of the Week this season. Hitting a big bucket down the stretch. Pinheiro, seven to shoot. Mm, got a hand on it. Lamont Smith spent a lot of time on out-of-bounds execution this morning. Six seconds to go right now. They need to do that. Williams doing that at the other end, giving Gonzaga a five-point advantage. Enormous play right here, this out-of-bounds play. With six seconds on the shot clock. Looking to get it in, gets it in to Williams, and he's fouled. Down amongst the pigs. Good execution right there. A clever entry pass, and then he got the foul. Good look right there. He shouldn't be that open underneath the basket. Tyler Williams, an 86% free throw shooter. Both teams have done pretty well at the line as Williams hits that one. Gonzaga 11 of 12. San Diego now 12 of 15. Both teams really getting it done. 80% is pretty strong for USD, but the Zags at 92%. This has been a really good, even though at times sloppy, it has been a really competitive basketball game. No, it's been an excellent game. And, it, and the reason that it was sloppy, it hasn't been sloppy in the second half. Both teams done a real good job taking care of the ball in the second half because the defensive intensity is good. As Tyler converts the second free throw. A timeout. Taken by Mark Fields. Well, every possession now down the stretch. Critical. Both teams in the bonus. Next foul for Gonzaga is going to be the double bonus. Canola. Sports Center at night after UCLA Utah on ESPN with John Buchagross and Zubin Mahenti. They'll take an in depth look at the second half of the NBA season with under 30 games to go. Plus, where does Tigers' game stand with the Masters just six weeks away and the best Waltonisms from the great Bill Walton? Sports Center at night, 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. So if you're a Gonzaga, you have found success through J3. You have found success with Hachimura getting to the free throw line. Do you just keep feeding the beast down low? Without question. They're trying to pound it inside to one of those two. They've got 24 seconds. They've got a decent amount of time on the clock. They're also excellent with their 
out of bounds execution but I would think this will be a possession maybe change sides of the floor and try and get either J3 or Rui Hachimura with the ball in the paint area big night for Killian Tilly the sophomore from France with 15 points scored seven straight at one stage of this second half but again, balanced scoring for Gonzaga. That is their identity. They were looking high-low. There it is right there. Williams to Hachimura. Hachimura, a couple of pump fakes, gets it done. Just muscled that in. There was contact. It should not have been called. That's a tough bucket. 12 points for Rui Hachimura. Right. Gets it into the hands of Tyler Williams. Tough shot again, tried to go glass. That rebound ripped down by Rui. Guess who? Hachimura on the bucket. They'll use the clock right now, not necessarily to hold the ball, but to make sure Mark Few with the call. Diamond is the call right there. Want to go back inside. This usually goes to J-Dub on that side of the floor. Now they're going to Rui. There he is again. Tough fadeaway. Got it to go with the baby bounce. And Hachimura lets out a grin as he goes back to the defensive side of the floor. Lamont Smith wants to talk it over rightfully. Seven point hole, but a minute and 16. Obviously the biggest possession, offensive possession of the game for the Toreros right now. San Diego with zero made field goals over the last 530. That's been a killer. The timing of going cold here late in the game. Well, again, they're doing it on both ends. They're doing it defensively, and Hachimura down there. This was pretty well defended. He couldn't get in as much as he wanted to. Cameron Neubauer did a good job staying between him and the basket, but Rui's just a little too big. He's got to leave his feet, and he's got to contest it a little better. Little Rui with 10 second-half points, most of them in the last six minutes of this game. And going against Neubauer, a little sophomore on senior crime there in the post in favor of Gonzaga. Mark View said that he's loved this guy, Hachimura, in big games. Says he would love to see more consistency from him, but you're seeing him step up at a big moment of a big game here tonight. Well, the, there's no question the advantage for Gonzaga has been their bigs. That was the difference in the first game, and it's proven to be the difference right here. Uh, they've done a good job when they got to the free throw line. They didn't take as many threes, but when they did, they made them. They're 8 for 17 from downtown, 47%. But their execution was just a little bit better here in the second half. They kind of chopped in and they stuck in early when USD was making a lot of shots late in the clock. Gonzaga hung in, mainly Killy and Tilly. They hung in with their offense when they finally got the defense going the way we're accustomed to seeing Gonzaga defend. And it became very difficult for USD to score. They balanced that at the other end by pounding it inside to Jonathan Williams and Rui Hachimura. Silas Melson bothered by foul trouble all night. If he had dropped 12 tonight, he would have joined the ranks of the double-digit scorers for Gonzaga. And he may well before it's over. Huge possession. Does not have to be a three. Three would be nice, but two would be just as good. you got to put the ball in the basket, and then you need to stop on a defensive end. Yeah. Ooh, that's a lot of contact. A ton of contact. A traveling violation, though, is called. The official wow. under the basket, D.G. Nelson, had his arm raised as if he was going to call a foul. It was overruled by Mike Reed. I bumped him. He was going east-west. He wasn't going toward the rim. He had him going sideways. But you would like to, if I'm Lamont Smith, I like to get that call. Mark Few certainly wouldn't have liked it. But there was enough contact there to warrant a call. That is a major turnover in this juncture of the game with a buck 3 on the clock and a foul committed in the backcourt. And the crowd starting to sense yeah, what quick foul transpired. right there. They're not wasting any time. Free, th free throw line has been really good to the Zags. It's Kill Killy and Tilly will get a chance right now. Take a go back and take a look. Hmm. Boy, I don't know. I can see why. That's a tough call either way. He was moving sideways. See, that was the key. He did a good job cutting him off. Oh, Curry, big miss right there. Missing the front end. Both teams at nine team fouls. So next foul, it's two shots for either side. Williams needs it, can't hit it. 
Pinheiro, the follow-up, got blocked, but we'll have a whistle away from the basketball. It looks like they're getting Perkins here. Wow. I thought it was a good look. Sometimes there's a tendency to rush shots late in the game when you're behind. I thought that was a boy's shot. It just, you know, barely, barely got there. But uh, I, I like the composure. So that sends Neubauer to the free throw line to shoot two, as that is the 10th team foul for Gonzaga. USD with nine, so we're double bonus the rest of the way. So Neubauer, the senior, highest GPA on the squad. His dad, Eckhart, was a decorated German swimmer, and his mom played hoops at Cincinnati and professionally in Germany, and they were all in the house tonight. Mark Few gets Jonathan Williams out of the game right now. Jonathan's not a very good free throw shooter, 57%. He's got the ball handlers and the free throw shooters in the game. Five point differential and a timeout signaled by Norvell. No one opens Zach Norvell wisely used one of the timeouts. So one timeout apiece remaining here with 50 seconds left to play. I think Lamont Smith's going to keep the pressure on. They've had trouble getting the ball inbounds a couple times tonight, not just against pressure, but also in the half court. But I think what you'll see is they'll try and deny. They're man-to-man. -man. They'll either have a man on the ball or off. They do it both ways, USD, with their man-to-man -man full court pressure. If they are unable to get a steal when the ball gets inbounds, it'll be at most one quick trap, and they're going to put him back on the free throw line. See the WCC standings, Gonzaga. Up a game on St. Mary's. A huge win in Moraga, February 10th. Yeah, this league ends this week. They start, they're one of the earliest ones. They start that championship week. Their final game will be on Tuesday. So this is the last week of competition. The WCC, trouble getting it in again. They get it into Melson. And hands reaching in all over the place. And somebody commits a foul. So free throws coming up for Gonzaga. Good execution, exactly what you'd want. They made it very difficult to get it in. Tried for a quick trap, it wasn't there. Got to put him on the free throw line and see what he's going to be able to do. Silas Melson, 89% from the free throw line. Gonzaga has made it a trend to finish games strong, and that's what we're seeing from them once again here tonight. Two big missed free throws right there. Killian Tilly missed the front end. Silas misses the first one there. Why that's important is it's going to stay a two-possession game. Again, 47-9, just about 50 seconds left. Does not have to be a three. They need to get a good shot. Ideally, they got to get it fairly quickly. Second one twirls in. San Diego has gone without a made field goal the last six minutes. They need one badly right now we got a foul on the drive called against Hachimura wow Isaiah Wright was not even looking at he was just trying to get penetration draw some help and kick the ball out got exactly what Lamont Smith would have hoped for it's clock stopped chance to get two points closer last thing the Zags want to do right now is commit a foul on the defensive end Right, the transfer from Utah. Played two seasons for Larry Kriskoviak. It's the first free throw. Free throw shooters in. Jonathan Williams out. As good a player as he is, he's going to be first team. All WCC. has got a chance to be player of the year in the league. Can't play at the end of the game if you can't make free throws. So two for two there for Wright. Four-point differential, a swipe, and it looked like the initial swipe was clean, but a foul is called on Carter, and he has to be careful. He is vehemently arguing the call. Well, because the ball came loose first before the whistle. Sometimes there's a lag time making the call. But I'll tell you what, they're doing exactly what you want to do in this situation. If they don't get a steal, they're trying to get one good, quick, hard trap. Here's the trap. Oh, that's ball. He knocked that out. I thought that was all ball right there. Meanwhile, Perkins hits the free throw. And I was with you. The delay 
appeared or seemed to indicate that that first swipe was clean. I thought it was. I thought they were going to call a foul actually on Perkins trying to get the ball back based on how late the whistle occurred. But it looked like he knocked the ball loose the first time. So here we go. San Diego trailing by six once again. Right. Here's Carter for three. Yes! Timeout San Diego. They used their last T.O. Excellent defensive composure by the Toreros right here. You'd like to get it quicker, but it doesn't matter how long it takes. It's got to be a good look. Pretty much any look that Owen Carter gets is a good look. He's filling it up again. He had five three-pointers the first game. He's got four so far tonight. Four for six. Yeah, it was five of 11 the first time around. So hold the phone. It's not over yet. 26.8 left to play. Those missed free throws coming back to bite the Zags. Two of their better free throw shooters unable to convert. Kelly and Tilly missed one. Front end of a one and one. Silas Melson missed one. Right now, again, the challenge, get the ball inbounds. It's going to be a quick trap. You have to think after that last whistle that this is going to have to be a pretty hard foul to get called right now. I think there's going to be a little latitude for the Toreros right now with their trap. No timeouts left for San Diego. Gonzaga has one. Norville gets it into Hachimura. And a near steal again, but a foul once again it's Isaiah Wright and that one was also close as well Rui thought he was going to get fouled he held on to the ball he thought he was going to get fouled then when they didn't foul him he passed it back they got their hands full getting it in see they didn't foul and now he made it you got to meet that ball Zach Norvell Jr. has got to meet that pass. He didn't. Oh, there's a reach. There's no question yeah. he fouled him. Yeah. Isaiah Wright reached across his body. Yeah, that angle was indisputable. Norvell to the free throw line. He misses the first. An 84% free throw shooter. This is the one that makes it a two possession game. No timeouts left for USD. Gets the second. J3 in for defense. Without a stoppage, he's going to be on the floor. If they're able to score, that's the guy they want to foul, Jonathan Williams. Here's Wright. Waiting until the final moment to pick it up. Carter for three. Off the iron, no. Rebound, Tilly. And he is immediately fouled. And why not? Killian Tilly, who has put together... A team high, 15 points. We'll go to the free throw line, just like he did in the Final Four last year against South Carolina, late in that game with an opportunity to ice it. Right place at the right time. Fortunately for the Zags, it was not Jonathan Williams who got the rebound. That was a good look. That was pretty good execution right there by USD to get the open three. Senior playing his last game at home. Cameron Neubauer fouls off. Now we got a sophomore, Jose Martinez from Calle, Puerto Rico, who's an excellent three-point shooter. He's in the game for Lamont right now. Martinez at five threes against Pepperdine. Don't sleep on him. He can shoot a three. Still a two-possession game, but San Diego needs some threes. Instead, the right takes the freebie deuce. Yeah, but it's a two-possession game. Inbound. That goes to Melson, and he's immediately fouled by right. Your thought on well, Wright's quick, decision there? Quick bucket is always good. They were right on the line right there. We used to call it either 32 or 33. If it had to be a three, we'd say 33. It's down six points, about 15 seconds to go. That might have been. But again, as long as it's quick, that's fine. They missed the free throw right now. You know, you can get something in transition. But uh, again, looking at the situation, it's four right now. Nelson can make it a two three-pointer game. 
College There's Bas five. College Basketball Live to follow us. They're going to come quick, and the last thing the Zags are going to want to do is foul, so I would think USD is going to get a pretty decent look right here. Maybe a dribble handoff for a quick three. 11.1. There's the handoff. Carter. There's the three. Are you kidding? Owen Carter hits again, and it is a three-point differential once more. And a foul will be called against Tyler Williams. Wow, I thought, I thought DJ Nelson called out of bounds. Mike Reed came in from near half court with the foul. Again, it has been, I don't want to say an adventure, but it's been very difficult to inbound the ball against USD's pressure. So that sends Rui Hachimura to the free throw line. He has hit his first six. Seven of seven from the charity strike. Well, that double bonus really makes it different at the end of a game. The difference between a one-on-one and a two-shot foul, enormous. Gonzaga wrapping up the regular season Saturday at BYU. San Diego travels to San Francisco. The hoist falls short for Olin Carter, and that's how this one comes to a close. So Gonzaga gets a scare, but they're able to survive. Here at Jenny Craig Pavilion, 77-72. Excellent, excellent job by Lamont Smith and his San Diego Toreros. Just not quite enough firepower to close the deal against the number six team in the country. For the sixth straight season, the Bulldogs clinch at least a share of the West Coast Conference regular season title. They can own it by themselves with a win at BYU on Saturday. So once again, our final score, 77-72, as Gonzaga comes from behind to keep the streak going. They've now won 10 straight and 23 on the road in conference. For P.J. Carlissimo, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Coming up next on ESPN2, it's College Basketball Live.